Today I am with one of the wisest, most intelligent men I can only say is one of my role models personally, the founder and um, the, I would say, chairman of uh, Impuma Group say is your or was your biggest fears or insecurities as a young entrepreneur, you know, pitching to investors or, um, you know, trying to pitch to clients or something like that. It is quite very important for me was I hadn't found my purpose. I hadn't found um, my, I would say, the why. Why am I doing all the things I'm doing? Why am I blessed the way I'm blessed? I hadn't found that reality. And it was just for me to have fun. As an entrepreneur, what people don't understand is that you don't get it right the first time. Uh, you are as big as you dream. You can never have it unless you dream it. You, know? you can never live a life you've never dreamt of. You know? So you, the important thing is always to be encouraged that even your dreams are through. And it doesn't necessarily mean your first try will make them happen. It just means your consistency in trying and pushing will get you there. What an opportunity. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is not poor. Africa is full of opportunities. Africa is full of great things that you can do that can even teach the world. Every person is a creature of the age in which he lives, and few are able to raise themselves above the ideas of their time. Voltaire, a French philosopher from hundreds of years ago, yet his words still ring true. Today I am with one of the wisest, most intelligent men, I can only say is one of my role models personally, the founder and um, the, I would say, chairman of uh, Impuma Group um, that is, if I have to say, uh, the holder of millions <coughs> and millions of assets, uh, uh, dollars and rands and assets. And um, I'm very happy to have you here, Uncle Manuabo, my uncle. Um, Thank you for coming. Thank you for, for being here. Um, for those who don't know Uncle Onwabu, he's a big family man. Uh, he's a very big giver. He gives to charity, uh, you know, millions and millions each year. And um, just an all around, I would say global citizen. You travel quite a bit, you know, and just a great man. Um, I'm really blessed to have you here. Thank you, thank you, AJ. <laughs> uh, I'm very glad uh, that to finally make this happen. Mm. Uh, I know you've been asking to have this interview for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we can finally make it. Oh my gosh. Yes. So if we have to go back to um, where you were before everything, before um, you know, what you've worked hard for and what you've built, um, going back to uh, Eastern Cape where you were born and raised, um, tell me, when you were growing up, what was your earliest motivations? Look, I think... Uh, I come from a family that uh, I, can, I can say it's uh, 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 coming from a poor background, if I look at the conditions that we're coming from. Of course, growing up, you, you didn't know that. Uh, you're just a child seeing uh, the life you live and you'd see other households much better or you see things you, you'd wish for that you never really had your parents afford to, uh, to get them for you. Uh, you grow up knowing that, you know, uh, life is not about what you have or the things that you are limited to. I grew up having these ambitions to, when my parents wouldn't do that for me, I'll always say to people, I'll do that for myself. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to a stage in life where I'll, I'll get those things for myself. Or I'll do those things for my family. Uh, that has always been my motivation. Mm -hmm. I know that um, growing up in South Africa, uh, especially in the time South Africa was in, and um, growing up in a, in a small rural town, um, you faced challenges and hurdles that were unique. Um, what were some of the challenges and hurdles you faced growing up and being just a young entrepreneur? Look, uh, as an entrepreneur, I would say, safely at the time we, we were studying was at the dawn of democracy. Um, and it was the first time, perhaps, uh, that a black child was given certain opportunities and things were open to us to do. Uh, so it, it was right at the time of transition. Uh, uh, in the early days where I think even the democracy was been still being in, a, in its formative state. I think the, the challenges of course have always been when you go out outside of your comfort zone you'll always feel 
the reality that you you're still black mm. uh, but in in our hometown umtata smaller towns around umtata where i started practicing as an engineer a, a young junior technical engineer at the time uh it was it was quite something because uh, at the time i mean we were regarded as those first uh young uh technicians who were actually being supported by the local councils and government and uh, local businesses uh, in the environment mm. you know it, it it really um brings me back to this quote by the ancient stoic philosopher seneca mm -hmm where he says, no man is unhappy or as unhappy as the man who never faces adversity because that man is never able to prove himself. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think, you know, as you said, being a trained engineer, being the first, one of the first young uh, black engineers that are coming into this whole new South Africa, um, it's really a, a beautiful thing, you know, and I, I guess it leads me to my next question for you. What uh, would you say, in your opinion, did you take away from these challenges, from these hurdles that you may have faced? Um. I think uh, what, what I took really away from, from, from that, I would say the learnings have always been never give up, never let anything put you down, and never allow someone to say you can't have or you can't do. Uh, always try to empower yourself, of course. Uh, and, and by doing the best you can and by actually making sure that uh, even those people who didn't have faith in you or who didn't have confidence in you doing something, you, you actually pull through and, and, and do it right. Mm, mm. You know, Uncle, uh, if you had to take us back again in time to uh, your fondest, most cherished childhood memory, uh, or you know, your early childhood memory, something that you really love and miss, Ah, there's so many. Uh, there's so many. It's, it's difficult to pin one. Uh, but I mean, uh, as a child, I was a very active child. I was, used to play a lot of soccer. Uh, actually, at this in me that I'll always want to to play soccer because I always f feel so free when I play soccer, and wow. I still enjoy playing soccer today. Uh, so I, I guess I was very active, playful child, and uh, soccer was my passion. Uh, I, I would say, if if anything, that's what was uh, available for us to to do as a as a sport. I mean, it was an every boy's activity in every day. So I was really uh, into sport, and uh, yeah, I remember just being out with the friends, with my age mate at the time, and we just go play soccer. And we could play the soccer the whole day. I mean, that was fun for me. That's beautiful. Do you think mm. it lent to your competitiveness in the business world? I think I'm a very competitive person, so I think perhaps, yes, it comes from there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just wanted to share a statistic with you and the audience. Mm. Um, in 2024, there's been a huge increase in the amount of people dropping out of universities uh, in their first year, in fact. Mm. Um, in fact, 32% of first years are dropping out, they're not finishing their degree. Um, and that's, that's over one-fifth of, of my class that mm. I would walk into and see they're not going to finish with me. Um, and so being an educated man yourself, a trained engineer, a man of different uh, fields, how important was education or is education to you and your family? Look, for, for me, I, I can say education was the only route to liberating my family from the economic situation and, and the realities of life. Um, I, I mean, there was no other way where I would say I, I had a plan, but just go to school, study, try to make something out of yourself. And uh, of course, the parents and from our, the generation of our parents, uh, they, they, they taught us going to school, studying, getting a degree is for you to get a job. Uh, but definitely education remains the backbone of that, even if I never took that direction but education was still fundamentally the, the the backbone of everything i got to do mm. you know something really interesting you touched on was mm. your parents told you to get your degree make sure you study to get a job mm. whereas you got your degree and you made sure you studied to become the boss and um a lot of young entrepreneurs want to do that um, they want to branch out 
Um, so leading to my next question, uh, what would you say is your, or was your biggest fears or insecurities as a young entrepreneur, you know, pitching to investors or, um, you know, trying to pitch to clients or something like that? I think the most thing that you first have to overcome is fear. Uh, as an entrepreneur, what people don't understand is that you don't get it right the first time. Uh, I can say one of my biggest uh, part of that has always been the fear of failure. Whereas um, entrepreneurship uh, is about failing, is about trying something and failing. And uh, part of it is yeah, that you must learn to fail and fail fast so that you move to the next, you know. So, so the, the reality of life is back then the fear was always that you're going to be rejected. Uh, someone's going to say no. And it will happen. People are going to say no. And uh, that's the reality of life. If people don't feel convinced or don't feel what you what you offering or proposition is, is not compelling enough, they will say no. But that shouldn't make you lose heart. That should actually make you more determined. So the, the level of um, confidence that you need to build is, is that it's not always going to be your way. It's not always going to go your way. You prepare your first pitch, your first uh, proposal, your first you know, uh, uh, campaign, and you think everyone is going to clap for you. It not always is going to happen like that. So you need to accept that when they say no, it's not the end of the road. It just means reflect and re-engage. Mm. Yeah. You know, something really interesting you said that just really hit me just now is if you're going to do it, you have to fail and fail fast. You know, you just make sure you try it out. Yes. You know, fear is never an excuse to not do something. Yes. You know, and um, something really interesting my dad says is if you want to make it big, you have to dream big. 100%. And if you're going to dream big, you're going to fail at some point. You know, you're going to, if you want to expand, you might not hit the goal or the target. Um, and you have to keep going. You have to keep going. That, that's absolutely true, AJ. I mean, many people have ideas, yeah. have good, interesting concepts they want to do, but they never get to do them. They never get to try because they're scared to fail. And uh, you are, you're as big as you dream. You can never have it unless you dream it, you know. You can never live a life you've never dreamt of, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, the important thing is always to be encouraged that even your dreams are true and it doesn't necessarily mean your first try will make them happen. It just means your consistency in trying and pushing will get you there. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you're young out there and you feel as though, uh, you know, Lonuavo has made it now that he's older. Uncle Lonuavo was successful at the age of 23. You know, I was just talking to you, Uncle, about mm -hmm. how you were, you were already established in your small town. Um, you had multiple properties, um, you had your business running, and you were quite established, and uh, you, you decided to go to Johannesburg at some point. Mm. Uh, please take us back to running your first business mm. and, uh, and how you chose to go to South Africa, you know, changing from having one business to running multiple and having different properties across the country. Actually, I started uh, my first business probably at the age of 22, 21, 22. Uh, but I started the actual work environment uh, doing my internship at probably age of uh, 19, uh, 1920. So what's very interesting is in, 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 in that journey, uh, I tried my part of, I just wanted to do something. And the employment didn't seem to be something appetizing for me. I just wanted to try something. And I tried uh, to go throw myself into setting up uh, the first consulting firm uh, with two partners. And yeah, and um, amazingly that we, we went very successful. We became very successful that uh, I think at the age I was, I mean, I thought I was accomplished. Uh, I believe that I've, I've, I've seen it, you know, I've seen it all because as a, as a young man, when you, in your early 20s, uh, you can buy a car you want to drive, you can live where you want to live, you, you know, 
you know, you have, uh, uh, at that time, I think I used to live between East London and Umtata. So it, it was a very comfortable environment. You're working, you're making money, you, you're young. It was, it was a great achievement. And uh, the move to Johannesburg, actually, I reluctantly moved to Johannesburg because I didn't know why. Uh, but because there was an opportunity that was really compelling uh, and uh, the people that were really pushing me or convincing me about it were really persistent uh, to really convince me to come to Joburg. Uh, but it was not really a, a, a sense of I'm running away from this environment to that. It was almost like, okay, I'll come and, and see if I can help. I can be of help what you want me to come to. So, and also I think I got to a point where I was not really being challenged with what I was doing. Uh, because I, I think at that time also, which, which is quite very important for me was, I hadn't found my purpose. I hadn't found um, my, I would say, the why. Why am I doing all the things I'm doing? Why am I blessed the way I'm blessed? I hadn't found that reality. And it was just for me to have fun. And I was having a lot of it, and I was enjoying myself. So uh, the move to Johannesburg was, was, I think, a beginning of a new chapter for me. Because I think um, when I was in the Eastern Cape, I was only focused on engineering and uh, doing something in property space. Uh, and uh, the move to Johannesburg, then that was a big switch for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Uncle, something you said that was quite interesting is you spoke about um, challenging yourself mm. and going somewhere new, mm. you know, trying something new. Mm. And um, something quite interesting I realize is that a lot of people enter, and if you're watching this and you are in this zone, you know, it's this yeah. ugly zone called the comfort zone. Mm. And um, there's this idea of getting out of your comfort zone. Mm. You know? I, I don't believe you'll ever be able to get out of your comfort zone. But I do believe you can expand it and grow it each, each time by stepping out of it, you know. You expand it, you grow it a bit. And Uncle Lonobo said oh, going to Johannesburg was a new chapter for him, and that's him expanding it, you know, his comfort zone, expanding what he finds comfortable, challenging himself, stepping out of, uh, of his, you know, what he's familiar with, you know, just like Abraham did in the Bible. Yeah. Um, he left his father's house, he left yeah. everything he had familiar, pa basically his inheritance, mm -hmm. you know, to go because he had faith in God. You, know? yes. you see that everywhere. You see that with Moses um, and taking the, the children of Israel through the desert to the, um, the promised land, mm -hmm. you know, you see that with mul in multiple times. Um, so how important is stepping out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself as an entrepreneur, as a, a young man or young woman, as an intelligent person who wants to be successful in life? I think challenging yourself must never end. Same as dreaming must never end. Because your challenging yourself will always be aligning to the dreams you're trying to achieve. So I, I would say challenging yourself is what I continue to do up to today. And uh, the bigger you dream, the bigger the challenge is of making those dreams a reality. So I always believe that you always have to find things that inspire you, people that inspire you. And having such, um, it helps you to, to really push yourself to the next level. You know, uh, as my spiritual father always says, you cannot have it unless you admire it. Uh, if you don't celebrate someone who has it, you can never have it. Uh, so you need to have those people that you look up to and say, wow, they've done it. And that sets your dreams equally. That inspires you further, you know. So getting comfortable is an enemy of progress. Wow. Uh, because the day you get comfortable, that's the day you stop progressing. So comfort must never be something that you, 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 you actually settle for, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm laughing because we had this conversation, I think, with, uh, uh, with my spiritual father. Uh, he says, you know, sometimes I wonder how you do it because we go through a milestone, we go through a big point of celebration, but you seem to not be stopping for a moment to say, okay, we've achieved this. You already, 
looking at the next goal. <laughs> and, 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 and for me, it's a culture. Uh, the minute we achieve it, we are done. Next item. So that's the attitude and that's the culture that I live with. You know, it's crazy. It reminds me of, um, I think it's this concept, this principle that if you don't uh, grow, then you start dying, you know. 100%. Even with like your muscles, if your muscles aren't growing, they atrophy, they, they become smaller. 100%. You know, the shark doesn't stop swimming. If it stops swimming, it dies, right? 100%. So um, I want to go to speak a bit more about self-development, you mm. know, shaping your mind, shaping mm. who you are now. Yeah. Um, speaking about fear and anxiety, mm. I know that in business, especially multiple businesses that you run, um, you're probably going to be making decisions on the daily that are not only going to affect your life, like your business, mm. your livelihood, but also the livelihood and the businesses or the lives of other people, suppliers, mm. customers, um, your, your own employees, and mm. so on and so forth. What is your decision-making process and how do you deal with that fear or the anxiety of making decisions? Look, I think uh, the, the reality is you always have to just be aware of the consequences of your decisions. And you always have to be aware that in life you are got to make mistakes. As much as, of course, um, it's not what you intend to, but the important thing is that you must take decisions in life. And those decisions, it's important to ground yourself then on your values and your principles, what they represent. I'll simply say there is no science for it. Uh, I ground myself in, in prayer. I ground myself in always trying to understand what is the Lord saying uh, in a season, in a time, and what is required of me. And it's important to know how to do that, because when you know how to inquire of the Lord, your decisions can never be second-guessed. Uh, your decisions will always be aligned with what your journey is. So. There's a part of it that has to be, uh, for me, it works because it's highly spiritual and it's influenced by that. And of course, there's a day to day that we have to do our best in all our efforts, you know. And that uh, on its own, it's, 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 it's like asking for a fish to swim. You get used to it that y it, it becomes part of your nature. Uh, asking for a fish to swim, a fish swims anyway. Uh, it becomes part of your ecosystem it becomes part of your life and uh, you get acquainted but that sometimes you have to take tough decisions but you have to take them the, um, the important thing is never lose the objective of why you do what you do mm. yeah that's powerful you know something that you said that was quite impactful was the idea of um, prayer grounding you you know especially when you you may feel like you know, one decision and the other decision are both of the same you know and you don't know which way to choose which way to go and um, if you're out there and you feel as though your life is fluctuating, ever fluctuating, and you feel like, you know, you don't know whether to go left, right, you know, north, east, west, south, wherever, um, and you feel lost and confused, I want you to find something that grounds you, whether it's prayer, whether it's reading the word, whether it's reading in general, whether it's meditation, whatever religion you are, whether it is, um, whatever it is, football, gym, find something that grounds you, something that you discipline yourself to do and you'll see success come into your life. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, something that I realize is quite uh, interesting, it's a, a very big issue with a lot of young people is uh, when, when you enter a new phase in life, you know, maybe you're about to start university, maybe you're about to graduate university, maybe you're starting a new job or you're starting a family or something, mm -hmm. there may be a lot of fear attached to going and starting a new phase in their life. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for a young person who may be starting a new phase in their life, a big phase, or maybe a, a big uh, business challenge, you know, a new project, a new venture, um, a new business, to kind of overcome that fear, that anxiety? Because I know you have started big projects, huge projects. Um, yeah. Look, I think that there, is, there is no one thing I can say try. It's all about your grounding. Your grounding helps you to have the boldness the boldness of taking on the challenges. 
And whatever the challenge might seem, I mean, this is always going to be subjective. I still have big programs even today that I still would seek the Lord for and, and really try to get guidance how to get this done. I never think I have the full knowledge of it all, but I always know what to do. The important thing for me is, is always know that the anxiety is not something that's ever going to leave. You always have to understand that maybe the, the initiatives you're trying is a risk initiative, can have maybe high stakes um, of win or lose. So the anxiety element won't go away, but it's all about what do you do. To overcome that, it would be grounding yourself. Grounding your, my grounding is, is simple. Uh, I listen to what my altar says. I listen to what my man of God says. I I I, I engage him uh, because at least I'm fortunate enough to share my thoughts and to share my 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 concerns and and big uh, things that I'm doing in my life. And there's no there's no better that I can say uh, I know, but just that. That's powerful. That's yeah. extremely powerful. You know, um, one thing I realize in a lot of successful people, you know, people who are um, able to see 20 steps ahead, is the ability to see 20 steps ahead, you know, to have a vision um, and to have direction, to have a goal, you know. Um, I, I realized that when I was first writing my, my book, Be Be Cool, mm. my dad made sure that I, 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 I highlight every single step, you know, and I make sure I, I hit every margin, every goal, you mm. know, because it's really important to have a vision and a goal. Mm. Um, before I ask you about how to start a vision, how to set up your goals and all of that, mm. did your 20-year-old self envision your current level of success or was it more of a progressive thing as you saw more and more of your competence level and saw what you can achieve, you started to, I guess, dream bigger? Look, I've always been an ambitious young man. Uh, I wouldn't say my ambitions, I saw them coming through and how, but I've always never wanted less of what I have. I've actually only wanted the best for myself and my family. And that's what always driven me. And, and uh, so my 20-year-old self would probably be like, oh yeah, you still got it going. Because at my 20s, I thought I had it. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the funny part, that in my 20s, I, I could still sit and say to myself, you know, uh, well done, uh, you've done good. Um, uh, also because when you come from a low base as a family in terms of the level of um, affluence uh, or the level of uh, wealth or possessions uh, once you you make it uh, even no, no matter how, how small it is it makes a great change in your environment so already my my working and my uh, early success was already something that was already a, a wow, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and uh, for me, when when I look back and I say uh, at my twenty, maybe looking forward now, it will probably be like wow. Uh, I think some of those things I I always admired and wished for you you have them uh, as 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 today. Man, that's awesome yeah. to hear. You know, something you touched on was uh, I was 20 and I felt like I made it, you know, I felt like well done, you know, but I still challenged myself. Mm. Um, I know I realized, you know, when, when you reach a certain goal, maybe something you've been wanting to achieve for a long time mm. and you achieve it, sometimes you may enter a stage of complacency, you know, yeah. or apathy or, you mm. know, you feel like you, you have made it. Mm. You know, I, I can say that after writing Be Be Cool, you know, I, I made sure that I think I, 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 like around 2018 it came out mm. and I made sure that by like 2020 I'm writing my next book, you know, yeah. I'm trying to do that. And it was just to kind of fight that idea to like think that at a young age, it's done, it's mm. done mm. you know, mm. there's still more work to do. Mm. So I, I really look up to that. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask you as well, I remember asking you a couple of minutes ago, mm. how did you kind of combat uh, that feeling of, um, as a young man, and I know I'm 20 years old, mm. I know it all, or like I'll do it my way, or um, the pride that comes with um, having success at a young age. Uh, look, I, th I think what, what you have to do, I always say, you must always look to things that will humble you. 
because when when you, when you keep on stretching your imagination experiences that will humble you is that when you think you've done it look at those that have done more so you've written a book at your age uh, already AJ I've not written a book at my age so something that must make you be humble because you must say I've done it but you must look around and say but there are others who've done five at my age you know so there must be always something that you must always look up to to achieve because that fear of or complacency that will come you can only overcome it by keeping on moving mm. that 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 is a continuous uh, push in your life mm. yeah. that is that is extremely true that's extremely powerful as well mm. you know um something that I, i really love is just the idea of just growing and continually growing and pushing yourself and trying um and that leads me to a a section of um this this part where it's more about goals it's more about where you want to take yourself you know yeah. a lot of young people are directionless mm -hmm. you don't really know you may not really know what you want to do mm -hmm. at the age of you know 18 19 20 or when maybe you high school you finish high school and you're not going to university or maybe you graduate university and you don't know what to do um what is the importance of setting goals as a young person and also how do you go about setting your goals personal business goals i know they're very different but um you have very big goals how do you break them down even to like smaller you know smaller goals mm -hmm. and what is the importance of having goals for uh, for anyone out there who may not even have any goals look uh, having, having goals is is everything to what you have to achieve if you don't have goals you'll be dragged all over uh but i also have a a, a philosophy in my life that says one to be for one to be at their best of achieving is to understand what is your destiny when you understand your destiny you will fulfill your purpose in this life so for me it is very important for one to find one's purpose very important because that will set you alight that will set you to fulfill things that many will never be able to because i believe all of us god has created us with special gifts which enable us to function in our purpose to reach our destiny that's how my formula of life works and until you are able to ground yourself into that i know when you are younger it's much difficult i don't want to lie and say at age 20 i had a purpose i didn't know my purpose uh all that kept me going was i know i wanted the best for myself i know i wanted the best for my family uh and i started i started working i started pushing and um that was already a goal that i was trying to attain but it was not linked to the overall belief of why why do i exist in this generation in this time what is what is lonobu here for because when you stop for yourself for a second and and ask yourself those questions it might just help you map out a path that you want to walk in life be it you are in academics or business or in corporate or whichever part you want to function in uh, or of life if it's where you are best set for and god created you for that be the best set your goals to be the best in that and and i think for me that is that is the biggest thing if if anyone can crack that code fast they can do multiples of whatever uh, their life is meant to be uh, of course it's not easy to set a goal because goals can also be stretching uh i think it's important to break them down into achievable or attainable uh steps because you 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 can set yourself a big goal that if you don't you don't find yourself you building uh, momentum towards it you might can get despondent discouraged and you know so it's important to set your goals maybe on certain periods that you can always see if i made a move uh in a month it can be a week it can be a year you know this year i want to finish my studies finish your studies Uh so the the goals have to always be attainable not too big uh to 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 create a sense of an an achievement so 
So I think it, it has to work. But the overall part for me is always try and find that your goals al 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 align to what your purpose is in life. Because I have a belief personally that if you put anyone um, uh, in, in, in their best areas to f of function, no one can outsmart them, no one can beat them in the game. Uh, but if you take the same person and put them out of what God has given them as a gift, you know, uh, mm. uh, they, they'll never function at their best. Yeah. You know, they'll often be frustrated with themselves. They'll often think they're not good enough. They'll often, you know, you know, because I believe everyone, once you find yourself, what are you best at? What are you good at? No one can beat you in what God has, 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 has placed in you. Mm. That's extremely powerful. You know, um, something you said that uh, quite hit me was you had to stop and ask yourself certain questions mm. to kind of map out where you want to find yourself in life, you know. Um, questions that a lot of people may be asking themselves out there. You know, a lot of people may be asking themselves, what is my meaning? What is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, why did God give me life? Why did God, you know, save me from this accident or this, whatever it is? Um, God has a purpose for you. He has a plan. He has a mission. And if you are struggling to find that purpose, just keep watching because Uncle Anova has so much to, to give to us. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe and please uh, share comments. Put your flag down in the comment section below. Tell me for, like, where you're from. So Uncle, um, if I have to ask you, uh, you told me that at some point you wanted to um, expand into your own business and you didn't really want to uh, work as an engineer in terms of in, in, in a job. Um, you also said that your parents kind of wanted you to study to get a job, right? So I know there's a lot of young people that may, they see their vision, they see their potential, but like, um, or like they see where they want to go, but maybe their parents don't see it yet, or their guardians don't see it yet. How would like a young person who has a vision or a goal, um, and their parents may see it differently, or their guardians may see it differently, how would they even broach a conversation with their parents? Um, how would they get around that type of um, anxiety, you know? Look, I, 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 I wish this question I would have asked my parents sometime to answer for me. At what, po at what point were they ever convinced with what I was doing? Because at no point I was ever employed. Uh, but uh, one of the wise men always says to me, uh, you can never argue with the results. Uh, so, 